Hey guys! Today we have a new format of video, and if you like it, then please comment below and give me some feedback. Um, but we're going to be talking about this engine, uh, the life size one, and we're also going to be talking about its parts and some building techniques. This engine right here, maybe you've seen the video, maybe you haven't. I have a story about it. I also have one where I'm putting it together. It's life size, it has a 64 millimeter piston and bore. It also has a 3D printed cylinder sleeve, which solves a lot of problems for me, but there's been people who've been able to build life-size engines of this scale without it. What is the weakest link on this engine? Well, as a matter of fact, it's the crankshaft. So if you'll take a look here, this crankshaft is unfortunately just not strong enough to withstand very long running. What The place where it breaks the easiest is between the crank pin and the crank counterweight. And as you can see, I only have six total studs of connection between that and that, which is not ideal. But just to explain why I've built it this way, I have two different types of cylinder that I could use. Let's talk about the engine block. This is one cylinder. Um, this has been tested by multiple people. I tested a while ago and I found that pistons don't slide up and down very well in it. Here, let me just take this piston's uh, ring out um, just so that we can try to demonstrate how this cylinder has a lot of friction. So we try to put that up and down inside of there. It's, oh, I think I got it stuck. <laughs> so, as you can tell, this isn't quite, okay. <sighs> Let me show you an alternate design. You have this 3D printed cylinder sleeve. I know you purists won't like it. You probably have already made a comment about it, or maybe you haven't, but that, that slides way easier. And just so you know um, that it's been tested, that's what is inside of here. And I can really feel, really feel the air uh, getting trapped inside of there. It has a good seal and it has pretty good uh, low friction. But we were talking about engine blocks. This engine block that has the 3D printed cylinder sleeve, it just doesn't have great bore spacing. Bore spacing is basically the distance between this cylinder and the cylinder next to it. It's okay if you have a single cylinder piston because you don't have to worry about on the crankshaft going from this one to this one to the next one. But if you do have a multi-cylinder engine, which this was going to be a V8, then you have to think about how do we make it so that the space between one crank pin and the next crank pin and the next crank pin on the crankshaft is able to be spaced exactly the same distance as on the engine block. That was a challenge for me. So what I ended up doing, I ended up building my crank counterweight out of both bricks and plates. And the two methods are both pretty good. On this engine, the counterweights are only built out of plates. But to get the bore spacing correct to the, to the crankshaft, I had to build this out of plates and this out of bricks. Because the space between one, uh, where one connecting rod should be going up into a cylinder and the one next to it over here is like 10 studs and a, and a plate. So I can't just do one stud, then a whole number of studs here, then one stud and so on like that. So what did I have to do? Well, I thought about it for a bit and I was thinking, what if instead of stacking plates on our crankshaft, what if we had the studs facing a totally different direction? And the answer was in a new part that came out in 2024. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those, but I'll show you on the screen. Instead of the real thing, I just have this. Here's what I built with it. Now, the first thing you'll notice about it is that it's octagonal. Reason why, again, I'm using substitute for that round part. But I've tested on Studio, the Lego design software, and um, they do create exactly the same diameter and same uh, round profile as this crank pin, which is four studs in diameter. 
Why is this better than stacking bricks or plates? Well, you can now insert the plate sticking out of the end of this into the crank's counterweight. And that will be integrated in there and it's not coming out anytime soon. But the next problem is we've got our crank pin, but what about our crank main shaft? Well, you can see I've already attached it to this one built out of bricks here, but it's not strong either. It completely falls apart once you put it under some load. Again, on this one built out of plates, I got quite a bit more strength, but even some work on that, if I give it some work, just pull on it, it will eventually fall apart too. How can we integrate the crank main into the counterweight as well? All right, what we're gonna need is something similar to what we have here, where we have a square hole inside of our round profile. And where do we have that with a six stud diameter? Some of you are thinking of it already. This guy. So now two of those together makes the right size, but they don't stay together. How are we gonna attach them? Easy. Stack them like this. You still have your square hole and you still have your, your round outside. Now what are we gonna do on the inside, on that square hole? Well, that is very similar size and shape to that. And as it turns out, we can put a brick through it. And as you guys, some of you know who build a Lego, the width of two studs is the same as the height of five plates. So here's a plate. One brick is three plates tall, so that makes four plus a tile. Now it's five plates tall. So it's the same, it's a square. It's the same height as it is as width. And voila, it fits in there perfectly. So now we have a brick poking out of our main shaft. And we wouldn't really want these studs to be visible on the crankshaft. Uh, they would kind of Make, mess up the spacing, right? So instead, let's make this have a smooth flat surface on the back and the front. We're just gonna need four of these. Macaroni, three by three. These are my favorite part probably um, for engine building. You can see I used them on my connecting rod too. Now it has a flat surface and it can mate up to the crank counterweight nice and smoothly. But the funniest part about this whole thing, and this makes me laugh, is that the strength of it is actually just in the brick. And the outside of the main shaft is just sliding on that brick. It's just floating there. It doesn't need to be attached. Well, maybe I could figure out a way to use these studs to attach something into a hole if I can turn those two studs into one using one of the newer parts. I don't know. There might be a way to, to attach this onto here, but it doesn't need to be because the attachment of these studs and these stud receptacles built into and integrated into the brick of this crank counterweight is going to be far stronger than this. At least I think so. And no matter how much you work it, I don't think it's going to fall apart. Deflection, flexing, changing shape, well, that might happen. Um, but at least it won't be falling, falling apart while running. So I hope you followed that. I'm hoping to get some of the round parts so I can build this as a 4x4 four four round uh, crank pin. And I'm hoping to get some more of these half circles with the square hole in the middle. And I don't know, maybe I'll be able to rebuild the crankshaft for this engine. And perhaps it won't fall apart anymore. 
which would be great because I want to take it to more shows. <laughs> and if it could run for the whole show without falling apart, that would be quite awesome. So guys, if you like this style of video in general, um, let me know in the comments. I like telling a story about some of my building techniques, uh, some of the process of engineering that I had to go through in order to design some of these parts, the crankshaft, uh, and each individual even portion of it. And it's been really exciting actually seeing other people trying to build life-size Lego engines. A lot of them are using this type of cylinder, which I totally understand. They're getting better at it than I am. Maybe I'll switch to this because after all, I'm doing a whole number of studs now for my crank spacing. It's the most exciting thing ever to see people inspired by what I do, by what my friend Will does, Delton Adams. We're building more engines with round cylinders. We're building more engines with split connecting rods like this one. You know, it's really cool to see the realistic detail of engines. Go check out uh, those two guys' channels. Um, and if you haven't seen it already, there's a great video on my channel, a couple of videos on both the building story of this engine and an assembly video. Thanks for stopping by the channel. And if you watch till the end, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Um, please let me know what you thought, and I'll see you in the next video.